Coming up, these dogs are giving new meaning to the term man's best friend. Plus, this is no ordinary chef. Mm -hmm. He's cooking up organic, all-natural treats for pets. Ah, but don't forget, we deserve a healthy treat, too. It's all next on Organic Living with me, the Hippie Gourmet. <laughs> Guide Dogs for the Blind, San Rafael, California. We're at an amazing place with wonderful people doing necessary work, really good work. We're gonna go meet Ariel and she's gonna give us a tour of the campus. So Ariel, can you clue me in on what goes on here at Guide Dogs for the Blind? Guide Dogs started in 1942 down in Los Gatos. Our initial intention was to serve blinded veterans of World War II. And very soon after we started, we opened it up to blind men and women throughout the United States and Canada. So the procedure begins when these puppies are actually born here. We, we do have our own breeding program and all of our breeder dogs live with volunteers, families that live within 50 miles of the school. So they, these dogs just come in for breeding purposes and they stay in the puppy kennel from the age of six to eight, 10 weeks. While they're here, they're being socialized, which is a really key element in order for these dogs to be bonded with people. Well, believe it or not, these guys are hard at work. We're learning to interact and socialize all of the different possible uh, scenarios they're gonna find out there in the real world. And this is how they do it. This obstacle course gets them ready. Playing and interacting with all kinds of surfaces that they're gonna come into contact with, aren't you? Yes, 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 yes. You guys. <laughs> That's the ear. Oh, puppies, puppies. Can we leave without taking one now? Come on. It's the puppy pen. But of course, the mandatory fire hydrant wouldn't be home without it. This is a nice one too. Any day that you come by here, you'll see the puppies out being walked by these volunteers who are very committed to this job. It's the most coveted job on our campus. And we have a dormitory here where people come for an in-residence training for 28 days. We provide uh, food services and housekeeping services. We serve about 28,000 meals a year and if you came to our dining room during meal service you would be very surprised the dogs are at their students left side in a full down position they are not begging or trying to get any food from anybody they're so quiet they want to have a very balanced diet in small portions and they need to have their meals served in a very efficient timely manner we want to support the local farmers here in Marin County and they deliver to us, which is huge. We want to lower our carbon footprint and be a good citizen and serve our students just wonderful foods. We use a lot of nice fresh ingredients from the farmer's market. It's just really satisfying to be able to sees people thoroughly enjoying the food that we cook here for them. I'm quite passionate about dogs. I have two dogs myself. It's nice being a part of this process, this cycle of nurturing people, nurturing dogs, dogs nurturing people, people taking care of dogs, dogs taking care of people. And it's just nice to be able to wake up in the morning and know that I'm gonna be doing something that's very good work. So the real training begins about a year and a half after they come back from their adoptive families. 
They come back here at about 16 to 18 months of age for their formal training, where they work with guide dog instructors who are trained how to train the dogs to become guide dogs. So what are some of the things that the dogs actually learn? Dogs are being taught how to pull into a harness and to guide somebody basically in a straight line and then deviate from that straight line when there's an obstacle. So the dogs are, are trained to move you around obstacles. They're trained to stop for overhanging obstacles like a branch hanging down to intelligently disobey if it's not safe to follow a command. So if she's stopped to show me something and I don't find it, but I tell her to go forward, she won't follow the command. Or if I come to an intersection and I listen to my traffic and I decide that it's clear and I tell her forward, but it's not, then she won't go. So what happens after they're all trained and ready to go home? We have a formal graduation which is open to the public where we invite the puppy raisers that have raised the particular dogs that are graduating in order to have some closure on the project that they, you know, they had this dog for a year and meet the person who's receiving the dog. And it's nice for us as graduates to get to meet the people who raised our dog and hear the stories about what our dogs were like as puppies. And then after we go home, that's really not the end of the story because we have a very extensive follow-up program. We have a graduate services department that stays in close contact with all of our graduates and can support our graduates with any problems that may arise or if they have new situations they need to work through and support our graduates if they need assistance with costs for veterinary care. Perfect. What do you get when you mix cinnamon and applesauce? A tasty organic treat for the favorite pooch in your life. We head into the Happy Pet Kitchens next. Okay. Nice. We're here today with Happy Pets Canine Bakery chef, Cesar Estrada. We're gonna be making some amazing organic crunchy treats for dogs. This is gonna be a blast, and I think the puppies are gonna love us for this. So this is an organic flour? This is organic uh, rye flour. We have 10 cups of organic rye flour. We also have six cups of organic barley flour. Now comes the cinnamon. Beautiful, organic ground cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna add a little more cinnamon. One more tablespoon. One more tablespoon. These are some lucky puppies. Oh yeah. So Caesar, do you think dogs are really liking the cinnamon flavor? Love it. Just it's like people. Damn, it's like people. All right. Yeah. Well, now we're going to add four cups of water. I'll measure that. Uh -huh. Okay. Right there, four cups is good cups. right now? Perfect. And now have a... Applesauce goes uh, with it. Absolutely. Okay, we're adding eight ounces of uh, apple puree, otherwise known as applesauce. So the reason we're adding the applesauce to the water, perfect blending. I'll mix the dry ingredients here. Okay. All the flour and the cinnamon. Add the apple juice and the... Now if it feels a little dry, you can always add a little more water to your mix. It's like a cookie dough. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, please you can take it that way. Oh, okay. Mmm. Looks like we're ready to roll it out. Yes. All right. It makes five pounds of treats. Yes. Complete, and that's several hundred. That's enough for all the doggies in the whole neighborhood to enjoy these treats. Absolutely. You know, this is fun. Millions on the muscles. <laughs> so, Caesar, we're ready to cut some treats. Okay. Well, let's start it right there. One, two, three. Once you get it like this, you pop it up by your own. Nice. Okay. This is cool. Uh-huh. Now these decorations, I think they really are for the uh, owners, right? Okay, now I'm going to break in this side. Perfect. And going to a little water, please. Okay. A little. 
mixing. So you just put that right on each one? Yes. Well, Caesar, it looks like we're almost done with these. Yes. Should we put them in? Oh, sure. You grab the tray, I'll get the oven. Okay. Great, so they're in for about 20 minutes at 325. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Sandra Estrada and we're here at Happy Pet in San Francisco. We're an organic canine bakery. We make all natural treats for dogs, cats, rabbits, and even horses. Organic, all natural, no chemicals. We also make sure that we don't use any wheat or corn or soy. They're vegetarian and most importantly, they're crunchy and delicious. We also have donated treats to the military working dogs in Afghanistan. We were very honored to have the opportunity to do that and do the most we can for dogs who do so much for all of us. Well, Caesar, I think I smell those uh, biscuits. They're just about done. Yes, sir. Ooh. Let's put in a little bit in there to cool. Uh -huh. Let's go see how they love yeah, these things. These guys. Great. Okay. I think we have the ultimate test subjects for our baking. Yeah, you guys are so well behaved. Come on. You guys, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. Well, Caesar, I'd like to thank you. The dogs certainly are happy and soon their owners will be too. Up next, we're rolling up scrumptious veggie wraps and putting a new green twist on fettuccine. It's all coming up on Organic Living with the Hippie Gourmet. Today we're at Guide Dogs for the Blind with C.C. Miller, the head chef. We're going to be doing a roll-up that's full of vegetables wrapped in uh, rainbow chard, is it? Yes, rainbow chard. Sounds wonderful. I guess we can start by just removing that little vein and blanching them a little bit. Okay. Perfect. Now this is going to be our outside wrapper right into the hot water. Beautiful bright green color, that is amazing. Wow, and now it goes right into the ice water which stops the cooking process. Perfect. So we're gonna fill this wrap with julienne vegetables. If you can make these into matchstick juliennes, that'd be great. A little bit on the long side, long matchstick. Okay. Okay. While I peel a piece of ginger. Ah, the aroma, whoo. If you'd slice the papaya and the mango, I'll juice the lemons. Okay. Excellent, next step. So Cece, I have this beautiful red cabbage. I'm gonna split this in half. You're gonna give it a nice fine shred. Okay. And then I'm gonna do a little chefinade for the rest of these. Mint, basil, cilantro, and some green parsley. I just love chefinade. Cece, we're ready to Cuisinart our ingredients. Great. Perfect. I boil about half of that one. That's our cashew butter. Maple syrup is beautiful stuff. One of my favorite sweeteners. And we're using a good organic tamari. That's the real soy. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of those. And a half we're gonna eyeball right about there. Four ounces of lemon juice, which we can do this twice. That'll be four ounces. I think that's about it now. Okay. Little pulse pulse and do that gently. Mm-hmm. All right, Cece, we're ready to combine our nut butter dressing with this beautiful shredded red cabbage that you made. All right. It's done best, I think, by hand. Can you do that? Yep, of course. Great. Nice. Cool. That's good. Mm 
Mmm. All right, we've got these beautiful blanched leaves of rainbow shard, but that's kind of a big vein. So I want to just cut a portion of that, just a little part. And then we lay them out flat so we have a place to receive our filling. It's a perfect dish to be shooting on video because mm -hmm. you can say, ready to roll? Yep. Beautiful. Just a nice little filling. Excellent. Then we'll put a couple of carrot shreds, like so. A little bit of fruit, a little pinch of the uh, sprouts in there. A little mint, a little cilantro, and a little basil. Now that's a, a good use for chef and And then some parsley. And a very key ingredient, a high protein hemp seed. This stuff is one of the best sources of protein on the planet. And we want to give a nice generous, maybe a tablespoon or so, like so. You ready to roll? Gently, firmly, perfect. Now that's perfect. Let it sit for a minute while we do the rest. So we're just going to cut them directly in half. And it gets a perfectly like sushi effect. Beautiful. And then the piece de resistance, the hemp seed. I just love the way these look, kind of a sprinkle around the top. Well, let's go a little crazy with the garnish since we have some extra carrots. Okay. This looks like a caterpillar roll to me, so we'll stick some antennas in there. Up next, greening up your fettuccine, plus a trick when it comes to getting your asparagus just right. That's just ahead. Bingo. Our second recipe, Cece, is going to be a pasta. So I'm going to call it the garlic fettuccine pea pod and asparagus. Yum. All right? You're de uh, stringing the pea pods. Mm -hmm. And asparagus is always pithy at the end. Mm -hmm. So the best way to take it, just grab the end. Wherever it breaks, that's where the tenderness starts. It knows. Yes, it knows. That's right. We've got our little asparagus tips, and these blanch up beautiful. When you put them in that hot water, bingo, they're bright green. You ready, Cece? Sure, let's All go right. for it. Open that up, let's do this. Yeah. Woo, nice. That's the reason I came back to California. I bet. Avocados, one of the best flavors, most nutritious fruits on the planet. And peel them like a banana. You grab them at the pointy end. You just try and get a whole piece at once if you can. See those asparagus? Oh, yeah, perfect, bright green. Go right into our ice bath to stop the cooking. Nice. Now it's time for our pea pods, another one of my favorite veggies. Those are snow pea pods and they cook really quick. Give them maybe 30 seconds in boiling water. Cece, I think they're done. Definitely so. 30 seconds later, poof. Beautiful bright green. Ooh, yeah, nice. All right, Cece, would you like to cut those into maybe five slices? Why, sure. And I will slice some of this lemon. Now, whenever you use avocado, what happens if you don't put lemon on it? It goes brown. There you go. Everybody's got to understand why we're doing this. This will keep the avocado bright green so it matches our asparagus and our pea pods. Now garlic is a major component always in a pasta dish in my mind. Sure. Put the water on the fingers and they come right out. Time for the fettuccine. All right. The most important part. Open that hot water. Boiling rapidly. Perfect. Nice. Hey, I think that's just about perfect a dente pasta. Me too. Excellent. Oh, let's pour it through there. Nice. Now we're going to put about four ounces. One, two, three. Let's call that four ounces. We put in our garlic. Then we add our veggies right in there.
All right, Cece, I think it's time to put our pasta back in there. Okay. Now this is a good, yeah. Okay, avocado's going in. Beautiful. I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese in there and some of our herbs. All right, then just give it another stir and it's ready to plate up. We're gonna serve this family style on a giant platter. It's also one of my best ways, I think, to serve pasta, so. The aroma is getting to me. I think I have to eat. I'm getting, it's making me weak in my feet. It's a beautiful dish. The asparagus, the pea pods, the avocado, all the herbs. Gorgeous. Topped with a little Parmesan. And then sticking with the green motif, a little mint on the perimeter, and a little parsley chop on the top. Nice, just like so. Gorgeous. It's one beautiful plate of pasta. Simplicity at its best. Green all the way through. Delicious and nutritious. Don't go away, we'll enjoy the fruits of our labor next. Well, thanks to Sandra and Caesar and Cece, We've had a great day at Guide Dogs to the Blind, and especially to all the puppies and all the people that volunteer to help them. Cheers. 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 There you go. Right. Caesar, where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> For these recipes and more, check out the Hippie Gourmet's Quick and Simple Cookbook for Healthy Eating, available wherever books are sold.